I'm going to say this. If that's what we're doing, if we hate the ops so much that we can touch anybody that associates with them, we've seen, um, what's the boy name? Uh, uh, Bugatti Casino. They killed his baby mama. Um, Young and Ace, they killed everybody in the car with him. Um, Honeycomb Brazier, they just killed his fucking grandparents. I'm saying that if everybody or everybody who's in niggas will even beef with the cameraman of their op, they'll beef with the cameraman, the engineer. The beat maker, everybody's fair game. I'm asking you, so what about the label head? What about the head of the label? Who's empowering and enabling the rapper more than them? The people who are distributing their music. The people who own the digital distribution fucking company that they're going through. Why aren't they fair game? I do not play with the bushes. I'm about to lay in the bushes. I got the K in the bushes. We about to take on me pushes. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. I am Ao Conseco, fearless leader of Ao Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is Lisa. And this is. Um, in hindsight and obviously we don't go in hindsight because we're going to the origin of the problem in the black community um I was on YouTube I guess last night and uh I saw um a video called War in Jacksonville and is there Julio and, and Young and Ace and ATK and KTA and all this shit like this? And um, I looked at it and it was just, I'm talking about, it was the war in Chirac. Like, and you look, they have them everywhere. The war in Memphis, the war in fucking Fort Worth, the war in goddamn... Everywhere you look, there is a fucking channel that keeps the fucking score and illustrates exactly what's going on to the point where not only is there a lawyer that's breaking down on these rappers' verses now, but if a police officer wanted to find out exactly where they're at in their city, they can just go to this video and look at it and they'll know all the players all the, they're showing, see, he was in this video with this person. When he said this and this song, he was talking about him. They have it for every city. Every city. There's a war, a, a channel who's fucking covering the carnage. Um, a police officer came, um, uh, I guess the, the video just uh, suggested me to go to the next video and it was a police officer talking about how we've seen a spike in all violent crimes. We've had a 20% spike in um, drive-bys, 25% uh, in um, uh, uh, property damage, like houses getting shot up. Um, and we've had like a 50% a spike in overdoses. And what that tells me is that this, this isn't art imitating life. This is life imitating art. And if we hold true to that, saying that it is the music that is and not just the music it's not just the music that is the turning point the turning point is it's not just the music if it was just the music then we'll have to sit back and and, and you know uh, a motherfucker can say well what's different from the music back then no it's not just the music it's 
the DJ Academics Effect. And that's all there is to it. That's it. It's the DJ Academics Effect. Before the war in Chirac, he didn't have this. And like I said, when I, when I stated this last night, I stated, I said, um, DJ Academics is, is responsible for the black, the death culture that is plaguing the black community today. And people were taken aback because obviously academics was the first one to, you know, shout me out, first celebrity to show love and, and, and I'm the person I am. Um, when when that shit came out with Selena Powell, she was talking about how he bought her a fucking G-Wagon. I called him to action. I said, my nigga, come on out and, and speak on this and clear this shit up. You motherfuckers trying to drag you out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, my loyalty, I've been hated so much that when a motherfucker show love and, and bring positivity to me, um, that shit means something to me. So, I don't, I don't break that. But, as far as when I watch this officer talk about the increase in this violence and carjackings and overdoses and, and all of these things that the rappers the rappers want to brag about doing to the ops you see war and Chirac references all through the music industry now ops keeping school but the things that they want to do to the ops so they can go and rap about that shit like that's all the fuck that you're hearing about. And the police officers, as I said before, there is no way that the police officers are not watching the war in Jacksonville, the war in Fort Worth, the war in Memphis, the war in fucking Chicago. And it doesn't even have to be the war in Chicago anymore because it's so many people that are not from Chicago that are, I'm talking about, screen recording every live that a rapper or a, a person close to a rapper is doing. They're watching everything. They're doing the police's work for them and compiling it in a neat little video for them to just take straight to the court. There's a rapper from uh, Florida. He bragged about killing Julio's or uh, Julio's homeboy called Bibby and because he rapped about it in his song he's now been arrested for that murder everyone knows that he's not the one that did it and you know he's not the one that did it because he's saying he's the one he's the one that did it and that's how you taunt your ops, but they're throwing that part out of it. There's a lawyer now that even explains rappers' verses in his interpretation. This rapper saying that he killed this little boy got him arrested. That that was a dude who got locked up with his daddy and they were saying his daddy told on him or some shit like that. This, say again, this isn't, art imitating life. This is life imitating art. What's going on in the music is what they're trying to do in the fucking streets. The reason why motherfuckers are still buying drink, knowing that all of this drink out here is fake. There is no more real drink out here. Go to Brum D video uh, talking about drink and the, the real drink and shit like that. They're still doing it so that they can post the shit so that they can be something like a fucking rapper. It's life imitating art. Where does academics come in on it? I don't understand how people missed, I guess, maybe they weren't aware or there for the war in Chirac and watched how 
insane it was to actually see these real live Chicago boys get thrown into, and this is what uh, Big Ant from Urban Politicians, he, you know, that's why he has his, the way he looks at academics. And a lot of people look at academics like you were instigating that shit and all that right there. But if that's the case, you would have to say the same thing about all of these fucking channels. All of these fucking channels out here. Uh, war anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like they're putting the shit out there and they're keeping the fucking score. That's one of the biggest things that really comes through to me when we're speaking about academics and the crime in the black community today, the way that you watch these rappers, you watch them, how they talk to each other. I'm sorry, that's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is niggas talking about niggas dead homeboys. Niggas don't remember but niggas did not do that before the war in Chirac. Before that whole Tuka shit, like that Tuka, that shit opened up academics putting a fucking magnifying glass on that city influenced the whole fucking world. Everywhere you go now, they're dissing their ops dead loved ones. That's how you get up under the op skin. And that's another thing that came from Chicago, the war in Chirac, was agitating your enemy. We so gangster that we talk about them motherfuckers dead ones. We smoke them in blunts. This all came from fucking Chicago. And when this shit hit every city in the United States, it turned the shit up. It had to. Because now, you didn't, it wasn't about, you know, going to school and, and somebody talking about you and or pushing you in front of everybody and, and everybody, ooh, and you don't do nothing. Now you look like a hoe. Now, if a motherfucker gets online, oh yeah, I'm smoking that tuca. I'm smoking that whoever the fuck nigga smoking. I'm smoking that Mo Three. I'm smoking that goddamn Beezy pack. I'm smoking that Roy Lee. That's supposed to be a death sentence. Like nigga, yo, out to disrespect you online and you ain't do shit. In this day and age, yeah, it's over for you. And that's why this is on a rap trap because in order. For you to be an artist, which it seems like every little nigga is, a nigga can't even be a shooter on the team. He can't be a shooter. He, as a shooter, this is another Chirac template. You so much of a gangster king born. Fredo in the cut, that's a scary sight. That nigga was supposed to be a fucking shooter. Your name then got so big as a fucking shooter that now you gotta start rapping. Now you have to have a certain amount of bodies before you can even niggas will talk about you for not having no fucking bodies niggas will talk about you for having security and having legal guns that's all rap trap shit that's all rap trap shit because we didn't see obviously you see if you have a legal gun they talk about you if you have an illegal gun then you get hit like the um, the nigga from uh, St. Louis, uh, 30 Deep Grimey, and whoever the other niggas is, every other nigga who got hit with a fucking gun.
it's a fucking trap. How the fuck? And the only people who win is the people in the buildings. One time, there was a situation where Yellow Beezy was beefing with Mo3, and then they saw, Yellow Beezy saw Mo3's manager in the club. He then proceeded to assault, chase down and assault the manager. And that he got points for that. That's points right there. Even though it was understood that the manager was not a street nigga. I want to raise this question. If you don't hear nothing else in this video, the question I want to raise is. If we doing that, if that's what we doing. And, and this is, I don't, I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put this out on the Patreon first to make sure. I'm gonna put this on the, the Me and Two channel and uh, put it on YouTube uh, to make sure they can't just take down my whole shit. I'm going to say this. If that's what we're doing, if we hate the ops so much that we can touch anybody that associates with them, we've seen, um, what's the boy name? Uh, uh, Bugatti Casino, they killed his baby mama. Um, Young and Ace, they killed everybody in the car with him. Um, Honeycomb Brazier, they just killed his fucking grandparents. I'm saying that if everybody or everybody who's in niggas will even be with the cameraman of their op. They'll beef with the cameraman, the engineer, the beat maker. Everybody's fair game. I'm asking you, so what about the label head? What about the head of the label? Who's empowering and enabling the rapper more than them? The people who are distributing their music. The people who own the digital distribution fucking company that they're going through. Why aren't they fair game? Dog. When we saw that video where that fat bitch shot the uh, the nice white police officer man uh, because she didn't want to go to jail and shit like that. Even though she was a nab and that was her not taking accountability for the situation she put herself in. What a motherfucker had to respect was the fact that she kept that same energy. She was a, I don't give a fuck bitch all the way to the end. I don't give a fuck about nobody. It don't change just because you're a white man. I'm saying if we got this much motherfucking salt, we got this much anger and hate in us to where we can beat up the fucking manager. We can beat up Anybody that's around them, if you see where I'm going, it seems like you can touch anybody that's around your op, helping them get further as long as they're black. That's what it seems like. If it's just hate all the way through and through, why the fuck don't you touch the motherfucker who owns the goddamn label? I'm not talking about motherfuckers who, I'm talking the motherfucker who own the label. If you really want to crash a nigga shit. If it's really like that, their label owner ain't moving. That motherfucker's in the same place every fucking day. He's in the same fucking place every day. Same office. If you can put a bag on a motherfucker head and make them go kill a artist's grandparents. Anybody close to that motherfucker why are these label people off limits? Wouldn't they be the people who are making it the hardest for you? Wouldn't they be the people who are giving him the most power? If it's really a war like that, that's what I'm asking. If it's really a war like that, why wouldn't you go there? I'm wait on you. Julie, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a little time on that one. Like I said, I know this is dangerous to say because this makes too much sense. This makes way too much sense. I got that bitch. I'm gonna have to watch the fuck out this bitch. Yeah, that makes too much sense. I bet, I bet you would see a change in this industry over fucking night if they had to feel some of this fucking pain. If it was as dangerous for them as it is for the artists. I, I, I gotta keep my cool because Lisa, she's trying to sleep. But that shit would change overnight. Now, all of a sudden, the label will be listening with an intent ear trying to make sure Oh no, we don't do that. No, that represents me. That can bring harm onto me. And as an artist, you should know that they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a. I don't give a fuck how they smile and come at you, and, and I, they can even tell you, "Hey man, they don't want you to tone the shit down." This shit means money. They fucking constructed this rap trap. It's not academic's fault. He filled a fucking void. If it wasn't him, it would have been somebody else. It was going this way anyway. First, there had to be a death culture, death culture for it to be magnetized, for it to spread. There was already a death culture in Chicago. You understand what I'm saying? Academics is responsible for spreading it to the world. Academics channel, Warren Chirac, showed that if you're an artist and you're disrespectful enough, you can get the attention of the fucking nation. And I listen. I listen. And, and I'm hearing that it's the same way with Chicago rappers that are beefing. But I listen to these Julio and Young and Ace, these motherfuckers who are talking about killing each other and have killed each other's homeboys and all this shit like this. These motherfuckers are on Clubhouse asking for each other's game tag, talking to hoes together, laughing. Niggas is like flirting with each other on some shit. They have everything in common. They're the same fucking person. They don't know why they're beeping. They just know that it makes money. They don't want to die. They don't want to kill. They just want to have some money. That's all. Niggas just want to have some money. That's all. You got to make it through a real fucking gauntlet. Gauntlet. In order to enjoy that fucking money. One of the things that you have to try to avoid is that little Nas shit. I don't even know if I can say that nigga name no more. They, they, you see how they fucking hit that video with two goddamn uh, inappropriate behaviors on that bitch. Inappropriate content. You gotta avoid that. But that comes a little bit later. Like first, you have to survive. And survive in the areas where you should not survive. Nigga, you didn't go to these places when you was a regular nigga. That shit was dangerous then. Now you got to go with all this chunk on your neck? It's the same story for every artist. As you coming up, they love you. When you get on, uh, fuck that nigga, he had in Hollywood. All right, no support. Oh, uh, that nigga can't come back to the hood. Now you got to prove you come back to the hood. And now that's the opportunity for the next upcoming rapper to make his name off of you. So there's actually still no fucking progress. Because as we can see, each time one of these rappers, even Nipsey, nigga Kobe Bryant, the Kobe Bryant estate is, is having some issues right now. 
And it's because one motherfucker out of a hundred thousand doesn't do any fucking good. You 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 notice how um, a person you can't lay on one nail or two nails, but if you have a million nails, it's a fucking foundation. It's a fucking foundation. But niggas is so fucking focused on this little money. The rappers that are getting to these levels are letting you know there is no money in music. You're looking at the uh, the anomaly, the exception to the rule. Little baby might have a little something. Migos might have a little something. Um, uh, what an NBA young boy might have a little something. But all these other rappers, and even with those rappers, they have so much legal trouble and bullshit going on, and so many people they have to fucking pay. If them motherfuckers wanted to say, I'm, I'm, I really don't feel like doing nothing this month, niggas couldn't do it. That's what money is. And really, niggas is broke. You ask these artists, all of these artists that are that are out here, who has an investment that pays them no matter if they're sick, whether they go to a show, whether they stay in bed all day or not. And I bet it's probably less than 1% that actually have that type of fucking investment. And those rappers would be people like Chameleon there. These rappers nowadays, they have to focus so much on not going to jail, not getting punked out online, and not getting murdered, and not getting robbed, that they can't really go into, want to put my money over here. They got so many people saying, hey man, this is a chance for a lifetime. Motherfuckers fucking them out of money all the time. These motherfuckers don't have no pension plan. They look at DMX and these other old rappers that have to go do shows and shit like that to survive, to pay their fucking rent. And they look at that shit like this, oh man, that nigga fell the fuck off when they're going in the same direction. You can't really get much bigger than DMX. He's had it all. But bad decisions the life, being in the spotlight, has him to where, you know, he has to have a more humble lifestyle. And that's not appealing. Not to mention, you look at Money Man. I, I saw a picture of Money Man. Money Man had a stack of money in the in in the picture and I, I I said that's not even his personality. Money man, you listen to Money Man talk, this is actually a fucking thinker. Really a fucking geek. Really a geek. Smart enough to know that this brings rules, but you must do it because just like in bodybuilding Shit, everybody else taking steroids. If I want to keep up, I have to do it too. Or well, I'm going to get left. So you get motherfuckers that's out of their element. You have to post these pictures that make you a 24-7 target. But then you want to, you st you thinking with a cool head. You know, I'm just cool, man. I go anywhere. I got good energy. Ain't no good energy. Because it's always somebody out here that's going to get points for knocking off a fucking rapper. And the rap game and the streets are going to say, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. If it's a lick and you can get it, that's what you're supposed to do. Niggas is hungry out this bitch. And nothing will make a nigga violent like having his dream in his face. And that shit might as well be a million miles away. Nigga can't ass pop smoke for all of his money. Nigga gonna look at you like a broke nigga. You can listen to how this nigga rap. Uh, broke niggas can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck it, I might as well take it from him then. 
But once again, we spin back around to the whole beginning. And I say, how much jewelry does the label owner have? What kind of car does he drive? What, what kind of beef does he have in the streets? He's responsible for making mothers all around the country just writhe in pain, build up a hatred in them so heavy that they just shake. Because you're making the music that is desecrating their child's grave worldwide. Not only making it worldwide, but you're monetizing it. You're monetizing it. And for so long, they've been able to just to sit back. I'm not in it. Oh, oh man, I just, you know, we just... We're just what? You don't... So, hold on, hold on. Police officers are asking... I don't know what it is. Um, we, we think it might be the music um, or the social media uh, that, that's driving this violence up like this. But we're having a tough time out here. Police officers are saying that. But you're saying that you're so encapsulated in your privilege... That you don't even see it. It's not even real to you. It doesn't matter that one of your artists dies. Or one of your artist's enemies got killed. And they're celebrating that death. In the song that you're in the picture toasting with him about. You're toasting to the monetization of a death of another young black child. But you don't have a hand in it. See, this is see this is the type of talk that will get you banned from all fucking platforms because this is something real. I've seen, we've seen as hip hop histo hip, uh, historians. We've seen that everybody, everybody around a rapper, we saw fucking uh, Ransom go up to Joe Budden's uncle and slap him just for being his uncle. Has nothing to do with the production, the packaging, and the uh, duplication, the streaming. Of his music. But. The people who get paid. Get paid. To put out that music. That is. Pissing. On your loved one's grave. You don't have no Anna towards them. Is what you're saying. You got Anna towards the manager. The producer. The studio man. But the label head. You just ain't got nothing for them. You don't even buy that. The beef ain't that deep. He killed your family. And he's on records laughing about it. About your mother crying, your grandmother crying, your uncle, your aunties, the funeral arrangements, how hard it was for everybody there. He is laughing at all of them. And making money off of it. And you have no issue with him. Yeah, my nigga. Yeah, we got some, we, we got some real problems. That's the problem. See, because it's <laughs> selective outrage. I'm not with that. That's 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 bullshit. I don't I don't I, I don't I don't I don't I don't believe in that shit. Selective out no, if you outrage, you're outraged. I'm outraged. I'm not outraged until I see it's a white man who owns the building. Oh, well, oh. But you see it's a black man or a fucking Mexican owner, and you just fucking...
if it's serious enough to go out here and touch anybody connected to him, they don't have to have anything to do with him. But anybody connected to him, you're going down on site. But the motherfucking office is posted up right on the goddamn. You can read that bitch and you ain't got nothing for that though. You ain't got no, you ain't nothing on that. That, that ain't, that, that's not realistic, is it? So you're saying that those people, those label owners, those streaming services, service owners, those, uh, uh, um, um, do distributors, um, owners, they don't know what's going on with music. What they don't know what's being said within our music. They don't know that the black community is in shambles, in shambles, and that this music is making a mockery of the state of the black community. How dare you get in your music and talk about broke niggas when you have broke niggas in your family, you have broke niggas, broke bitches in your family. You have to provide for your mother because she ain't got no money. You're laughing at the state of our community as if you're not part of this. And you get paid for it. Listen. NLE Chopper said he wasn't doing it no more. Where's NLE Chopper? Does that ring any bells in your mind? Any bells that ring anything? Like, that don't seem throwed off at all. That they won't say, dog, if you made a song talking about taking a fucking dog and hanging him with a rope over a fucking fence, they wouldn't put it out. So what do you mean they not a part? What do you mean they're not a part of it? They know that you're not talking about uh, uh, killing no fucking animal, not feeding an animal, but you talking about how you murdered this woman's child because he had on the wrong colors because he came through the wrong neighborhood. You going to a fucking graveyard and stepping on the grave. And this song, this video going, you don't want, so what about the fucking, the people who are allowing that on their channels? You can start small then. What about the reaction channels or, or these motherfuckers who put it on their platform? Death celebration songs. The label heads know that their artists are celebrating death because they wouldn't sign the motherfuckers if they didn't. Once again, this is the type of talk that, that in niggas' career. Because it makes too much fucking sense. You know motherfucking well if you made a song about doing something to a cat, to harm a fucking cat, that shit will be pulled from the streaming service. You will be dropped from the label. But every one of your songs is talking about murdering a black man. After you murder the black man, celebrate the murder of the black man. That shit all good. All over the streaming service. Get that shit everywhere. Man, that shit out of everywhere right now, my nigga. Go get that shit. My nigga, I just, like I said, dog, I ain't with that selective outrage shit. Um, if you not mad enough to, you know, touch anybody that you can, if you not mad enough 
to to uh, just as you would touch a black man's grandparents before you go to your rival's label and talk to the man that runs it. And it's so crazy because you motherfuckers probably signed to the same man. That's probably what it is, ain't it? You can't go and kill your ops head label man because you will be killing your own head label man. I talk about DJ Academics um, and what he did as a geek, a nerd, uh, someone who does, doesn't understand, he doesn't understand the streets at all. Um, Y'all, I, I always tell y'all, I don't say R.I.P. to no rap. I don't say condolences because I don't give a fuck about them. Uh, no one on the internet does. They don't give a fuck about any of these rappers. But it's just something that you're supposed to say. I don't do that, supposed to say shit. If that's not how I feel, I'm not going, that's not the fuck. Like, my nigga, this is what the fuck is. At this point in time, if we don't change what's going on, then the same thing will continue to happen. I want the people responsible to be brought to justice. And I don't give a fuck if it's street justice or fucking criminal justice. The people responsible are the people who are getting paid. Everywhere you go, it's always follow the money. The motherfucker who has the most on the line is a motherfucker who gets paid off of it. And these vampires get paid off of black death. Two times, if you ask me, fuck it, we going the whole way. They get paid the first time when the black man, the black boy, the black girl gets killed, then they get paid again when they sell the organs. Fuck that shit, we're gonna do it all. We're gonna talk about it, man. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. We're gonna go on and talk about it, my nigga. That's why I'm putting this on the Patreon. That's why I'm putting on the Patreon. They ain't no nah, fuck that. Fuck that. My nigga. These people understand exactly who we are and what we could be. It's in their best interest to keep us blind and at each other's throat so that we don't. I heard, listen to what I'm telling you. I heard these niggas on Clubhouse talking to each other like homeboys. Like these niggas talk like real homeboys. These niggas, when they, they not that gangster to where yeah, I can talk to the nigga, I'm finna murder and all. These are children, these are kids. They asking for each other's game tag. Who won the last game? Tell the truth, man. Man, you lying, bro. I right, hold the fuck up. Ain't this the nigga who said, fuck yo dead brother? What in the fuck? And that's why, like I said, the Rap Trap book will be out this year. It is a fucking requirement. To be a certain type. And it has a lot to do with diagnosing mental illness and uh, stunted mental growth. We want someone who is really a drug user. Artists, can I please get an artist to come forth and answer the question on whether or not you got a drug test whether they told you to pee in the cup or you wouldn't even know if they got a hair follicle or some shit like that. You probably wouldn't even fucking know. They need to make sure that you're on dope. They need to make sure of it so they're sure you're going to make a bad decision. In the war that you're going in, they should be preparing you like a Navy SEAL. You should be totally focused at all times. And this is why 6 9 the reason why 
he won't be touched until his money run out is because he's looking for the hit at all times. So he comes prepared to the game. Y'all niggas actually think you good in places. He knows he's not good anywhere. So he prepares accordingly. But you, I uh, mean, they love and they be, you know, the street love me, you know, I'm the boys. Dirt, somebody he the boys, this nigga did so, like, nigga flop. What is 14,000? What the fuck did he sell? And you know, they buy half of it. So whatever the rapper sell, the label, they buy half of those records. Shit, in this case, they probably thought half of the records might have been the fucking 14. They might have tried to put their 14,000 on top or whatever they thought they were going to get, and that's all the fuck they sold. And everybody is out here. So after you didn't did all this shit, the quando run, all these situations I have to talk about on the rap trap. But just all of these lose lose situation. NBA young boy, he just got hit. Had to pay all of this to get out on a bond. He already on the bail. He already on a probation. All this shit like this. You have to continue. Wayne, another gun or some shit like this. Now you get hit. Uh, you got to sell all your masters, Drake and Nicki Minaj shit. To win a Trump homeboy to get you out the shit. There's no way that you can look at the modern day rap game and say that this don't look like a fucking trap. There's no way you can say that. Looking at what each artist is going through. You will be hard pressed to tell me a artist, successful artist that doesn't have no lingering beef. Or isn't on some type of probation or bullshit like that. And it's crazy when you do start naming those rappers. Those rappers start being different fucking races. Chinese and black and fucking Lil Pump and fucking white boys and all this shit like this. But just niggas? Oh man. Like I told you. Like I told you. These other motherfuckers, they can come in this bitch and just be faked in a bitch. And it's all good. Little you love your music. A nigga really got to be about that shit. And really got to be gangster for motherfuckers to even pay him any fucking mind. To the point where, as I was talking about Money Man earlier, bringing that big stack of money out. When an artist pulls out money and shit like that, it doesn't even have the effect like that no more. Because everybody does it. Everybody does that. That's damn near like... Nigga, that's required. Big chunk of chain, stupid ass not. No matter how you got to get it from your manager or whatever, you need to have that money to show that you ain't nigga. Dog, I look at Dirty Glove Bastard and you watch these no name rappers, DJ Small's eyes. You watch these no name rappers go on that bitch. Stupid chain. Money on that motherfucker, big stupid money, but you never heard of them. And after they leave it, like, you really don't give a fuck about the interview. You look at them, there's another rap by and that's what I'm telling rappers, like, nigga, I know what the fuck it is. Like, I know the YouTube class that the Big Face podcast provides, uh, sales, it's $3,000 until June. Um, this is a nigga's only way to come up um, because it's the only way that you're going to learn how to build your audience showing money and dropping videos is not going to do it it's not going to do it I don't give a fuck how many features you get it's not going to do it you have to build a fucking fan base that's it that's all and niggas got to learn how to work YouTube and that's part of the YouTube class is learning how YouTube work and then learning how to manipulate it and then learning how to build with, with, with you. But like I said, it's just, and really that that's, that would be how an artist could sidestep the rap trap is by building your own audience but still, the rap trap will come to you because if you're a certain type of artist, niggas don't have to have a reason for saying fuck you. 
if you a gangster rapper, I can just for no reason come out, nigga. I don't believe you gangster, and because I'm a stupid retarded nigga, yeah, nigga. I just ain't feel that nigga would like that, and motherfuckers gonna ride with it. Niggas don't have a have to have a reason for damn. I don't give these niggas no reason. Are you serious, my nigga? He, like, so like I said, when it come down to it, um. I don't believe, I want y'all to start doing that. Start asking artists, if you got that much energy for your op, why haven't you, and you will touch anybody around him, why haven't you touched the label people? You can't say that they don't have nothing to do with it. They're the reason why he's popping. The reason why everything that he says about you gets notoriety. Why motherfuckers feel like you losing or that there's even a competition. And it's blood on this shit. And like I said, the the, the war on Chirac, that that you all you would have to do is look at it and look at what's happening today. You see that now it's just year for year. It has been rolled over, rolled over, snowballed effect. Now everybody smoking a op in a blunt and keeping the skull and everybody got an op and it accelerated the rap trap tremendously. Tremendously. To the point where who shiesty who Giano um these new artists, these niggas, like, even with um, Black Youngster, when got it when they signed him, like, motherfuckers have to have a, you cannot just be no fucking rapper. You have to have had some type of street situation, period. 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 You can't just be no pure-blooded fucking rapper. Like, nah, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. You gotta have some... You gotta have a prison record, police record, nigga. You need to have, you know what I'm saying, the streets vouching that you were the plug, something. But just being a... a nah, nah, nigga ain't on that. Good rapping ass nigga, like niggas ain't on that shit. And this is why you got who shiest in, um, and some of these niggas can rap, um, and some of these niggas like Kodak Black who've been molded since they were young, you know, had a hell of a name, but you can't even do that shit no more. Like nah, it's all about because motherfuckers is watching you, they watching. Ah, uh, that nigga ain't really, it's it's. It's a fucking trap, pure point blank. And like I said, I, I dare somebody to show me different. Show me different. So, that is what that is, man. Um, y'all make sure y'all fuck with the Omen Watch. Just go to uh, myomentimepiece.com. Uh, pick your nap, catch your nap detector, or just get one and stay there free with it. Um, make sure that you go to myoliveleaf.biz myoliveleaf.biz and get that guy this is the season when you finna catch a goddamn cold because it's changing season it's cold outside right now right now and it's been hot as fuck all day this is pneumonia weather believe that um make sure you go to the paypal hit the cash app show love support it because we do do this shit over here that motherfuckers is not gonna monetize and we always under scrutiny for motherfuckers to try to take us down. So make sure you support and show love. You can get um, your uh, t-shirt. These are not out yet, but you can get your Are You Serious t-shirts and your Big Face Podcast t-shirts by going to paypal.me forward slash the letter R, the letter U, series um, 10. Are You Serious 10? Or is it Are You Serious? Damn, I'll put it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen so y'all can remember that. 
Um, but we got new merchandise finna drop as soon as goddamn it's truly spring going into summer. Handy y'all business. I'll see you in a minute. Love, love. Come on, Lee. Come on, babe. Come on. Say bye bye to the people. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. See? Tell them how you can do it all over uh, real deep spot.